Hello everyone and welcome to episode 6 of our 10 part series on Manifestation Mastery. This is the Mindset and Manifesting Podcast. My name is Lena. I am a spiritual teacher and a conscious manifestation coach. And today we're going to talk about action, co-creating with the universe. And again, this is episode six of our 10 part series on manifestation mastery. So today we are going to talk about uh, the power of inspired action. Again, this is co-creating with the universe. Okay. And action. So we're going to talk about the power of inspired action with action being the bridge that connects your intentions with manifestation. Okay. So in this episode, we're going to explore the transformative power of taking inspired action that is aligned with your desires. And then understanding that, that action is it just motion, but it's a conscious co-creation with the universe. We're going to talk the center about the synergy uh, between intention and action. So how do intention and action work in harmony? All right. I'm going to discuss the, that beautiful synergy between setting intentions and taking intentional action and then creating a powerful flow of energy. We talked a lot about this in the last episode. Uh, we'll talk about exploring techniques to align your actions with the energy of your intentions, uh, which will help to amplify the manifestation process. And we're also going to talk about overcoming resistance to action. Okay, so resistance to action can often be a stumbling block, right? We don't. So I'm going to delve into the strategies for recognizing and overcoming resistance, uh, allowing you to take steps towards your desired reality with confidence, right? Understanding the action is like a dance, right? Not a forceful push. And then learning to flow with the rhythm of co-creation. And of course, we'll talk about the dance of co-creation. So co-creating with the universe, right? It's this dance of energy. And again, we talked about this in the last episode. So we'll discuss the concept of surrendering to the flow, allowing the universe to contribute its part to the manifestation process. And I'll give some practical insights on finding the balance between intentional action and trust in the unfolding journey. Okay. Uh, we'll talk about trusting the unseen path, taking action often involves stepping into the unknown. So we'll explore the concept of trust and how it becomes a guiding light on the unseen path of co-creation. Okay. Um, which in turn cultivates trust in the process, knowing that the universe conspires to bring your desires into fruition. And then we'll uh, talk about celebrating those small wins and uh, the course corrections, right? So every step is a victory. And I'll talk about the importance of celebrating small wins along the manifestation journey and um, being open to course cor corrections that really refine your path and understanding that the journey is as important as the destination. So each moment really is uh, a chance for growth. So let's talk about inspired action first. Okay. Uh, inspired action like this little dance with the universe. <laughs> All right. So let's, uh, so first in this, in talking about inspired action, let's talk about alignment with desires. So inspired action, it's not this random series of tasks. Okay. It's, it really is this conscious dance with your desires. So each action is a deliberate step harmonizing with the frequency of your intentions. So the more aligned your actions, the stronger the bridge between your dreams and reality. Okay. So you can use intention as a guide. Inspired action, if it often arises from the intuitive whispers of your soul. Okay. So listen to the subtle guidance within. 
for um, because it serves as a compass directing you toward actions that resonate with your aspirations. And trusting your intuition, right? It becomes this cornerstone in this dance of manifestation, if you will. Okay. All right. Now let's talk about co-creation. So, or conscious co-creation rather. So if you can recognize that every action is a form of co-creation with the universe, as you take inspired steps, you send signals to the cosmos, to the universe. Okay. Affirming your commitment to the manifestation process. So conscious co-creation involves actively participating in the sculpting of your reality because um, yeah, you have to have action, right? You can't just sit and do nothing all the time. Like if you get those little uh, nudges, right, of inspired action, you actually have to take the action. I'm going to take a sip of my coffee one sec. Okay, so uh so yeah action is action's a big part of it right it kind of rounds it out right you can do all the other steps but without the action um the whole's not going to uh come together right it's got to come full circle so all right now let's talk about understanding action beyond motion quality over quantity so in the realm of manifestation, the quality of your actions holds more significance than the quantity, okay? Uh, so each action infused with intention and purpose carries a potent energetic charge. So it's not about busyness, but about the conscious direction of your energy, okay? And this goes back, this really kind of goes back to like affirmations. And so if you're uh, writing or saying affirmations, but you're doing it kind of robotically without, you know, without feeling, without um, conscious intent, and you're just doing it because you think all these affirmations are going to uh, bring my desires into fruition, but uh, you're just doing it over and over and over again, right? That quantity, that quantity is not going to be as potent as sitting down and visualizing for even five minutes, right? With feeling, right? If you're able to inject emotion and feeling into that visual, visualization, see the outcome of that desire as it already is and invoke emotion into it, right? Feel into it. That's way more potent than, you know, saying or writing your affirmations 500 times a day. So quality over quantity. Um, and then there's pacing, pacing and patience. Okay. So manifestation is a journey. We are doing it every moment of every day through our intentions, our thoughts, our beliefs, our words, our actions, etc. Every moment of every day is a manifestation. So it really is a journey. It's not a sprint, right? Because we're shifting con constantly throughout the day. So pacing your actions and exercising patience are really integral components of the process. Okay. So because everything has its as Neville Goddard says, its own appointed hour, because it's a seed. You plant that seed of desire, everything needed for that seed, um, to, to really grow, uh, all the, everything, all the components for that manifestation are already contained within that seed, right? So just practice patience. Okay. Trust that each inspired step that you get uh contributes to the unfolding of your desires and the universe responds in its divine timing okay so trusting is really really important and when we talk about letting go that's really all letting go is it's just trusting in 
the process. You've planted the, the seed. You have set your intentions. You know what you want. Okay? Not focused on the opposite. You know what you want. And it will manifest. Just trust the process. And if things come up along the way that um, bring up worry or doubt, just realign your focus. Those things come up to show you that you still have those fears or doubts, right? You don't have to feed into them. Just observe, observe them, and then realign your thoughts, okay? All right. Now let's talk about synchronicity and uh, signpost. All right, so pay attention to synchronicities and signposts along your journey because you will get them. Uh, so these are often cues from the universe indicating that you are on the right path. Inspired actions align with the natural flow of your manifestation journey, okay? C really creating this dance of serendipity. So, um, synchronicity, signposts, there could be any number of things. Um, for me, right now because i don't really watch tv i i see a lot of i see a lot of like like numbers people call them angel numbers uh a lot of them like every day multiple times a day i think i saw 444 like three times yesterday i saw 111 11 11 like uh four or five times yesterday um and I think there was two, 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 I think I saw. So things like that. When, when I do watch TV, uh, which isn't very often anymore. Um, but I used to see, I used to see, um, like signs and synchronicities, uh, my manifestations, like even it, weirdly in like television shows or movies, right? a phrase or a word okay the other uh i was seeing owl uh, owls owls and elephants a lot uh last week and um i haven't been like i haven't been on i haven't been on social media like youtube and like tiktok i just took tiktok off my phone again because i was going down a rabbit hole but um, I was seeing owls and, and on Instagram too and Facebook, owls and elephants a lot. And I kept thinking, why am I seeing owls so much? And I looked up uh, the significance of owls and I was like, oh, that's exactly where I'm at on uh, my journey. And then um, right before I took my launcher dragon course, uh, started what two weeks ago i was uh i was connected so f my guides right we all have we all have guides um really i view guides as aspects of ourselves right um whether they're elementals or or what have you okay aspects of ourselves and other dimensions uh, other timelines, etc. Right? Um, if we can conceive it, if we can think about it, it exists. Right? So things I never would have believed in before, even though I haven't actually seen them, like dragons and um, like mermaids and unicorns and and things like that. Right? I don't have fairies and unicorns and leprechauns and things like that come up for me, but I have four dragon guides and they were coming in um w one at a time right probably over like the past six months and then right before this launcher dragon course four of them came in all at once and um shared information with me uh gave me specific uh information on how to utilize working with the information okay and then, you know, I found Natty on, I saw her on TikTok. I'd seen her before, but she talked about her course and automatically it resonated with me. I was like, ah, okay. Um, and then there were some other, there were some other 
synchronicities in my mastermind course that I take with um, Faith and I she's been on my podcast before but um, she she had brought up dragons too so so there were these signs and synchronicities right so things like that okay um they may be different for you but sign but they're there okay and you'll start to notice them and i see them as okay i'm in alignment right with my desires i'm where i need to be etc okay um i will say actually there i'll talk about later when we get to that section about how obstacles can kind of come up um yeah i'll talk about that when i get to that part because it happened with the launcher dragon course um all right so let, now let's talk about goal breakdown so break down your long-term goals okay into if into smaller actionable steps okay so this not only makes the process more manageable, but also provides a roadmap for inspired actions. Okay. So celebrate each milestone as a victory on your path. So for instance, if you have a vision board or if you've written down your intentions as goals, then, and you have like a big goal, say for instance, you want to take a European vacation, right? Um, but you're going to need time. You're going to need time off. You're going to need finances, things like that. Okay. Um, are there smaller actionable goals that, uh, that, that you can tune into? Now, here's the thing. You don't, if you have, if you have set an intention, if you have visualized like the end result, if you've visualized already being on that vacation, like in your, you have visualized they were walking down this cobblestone street in Rome. Okay. Everything needed for that manifestation to come to fruition will come to fruition. Okay. But if there are, if there, so, and we don't control how things come about. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we can, uh, sorry that if you heard that noise, that was the stool under my desk. Um, so we can just leave it be and trust that it will happen, right? Um, but then again, we have goals. So although you have visualized that that desire, if you have go if you have goals um, that maybe coincide with that, okay? So maybe you have a job now that um, that doesn't provide time off. So maybe you need to find another job or whatever. Um, that would allow time off, or maybe you want to leave that job or whatever. If you have goals and intentions um, that you know will take certain actions, it's okay to have those goals and then break those um, break those actionable steps down. But here's the thing. You're going to be inspired to do things as well that maybe you haven't necessarily written down. Okay. The important thing is to tune into that because it may take you, um, like you may have a, you may have a set of goals. You may have, you know, st steps that you need to take. Like I have my planner, right. Um, that I write it every day for things that I need to get done. But if, if I have my work day set where I'm like, okay, I need to do this, 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 and this, but I'm sitting here and I get this inspired action to, um, no, you need to go do this today, right? Like you need, instead of working at home, you need to go like this happened one time, not, uh, towards the end of, was it last year? This happened towards the end of last year. I was sitting, uh, I was sitting here working or I was sitting on my, the chair in my living room. And, um, I think I was scripting or something. And I had a set of, I had a, everything written in my planner of what I was going to get done and during the, what I needed to get done or wanted to get done during the day. And something told me, no, you need to, 
uh, you need to go have breakfast at this diner up the street. And I was like, that's weird. And I brushed it off at first. And I kept, it kept coming to me, you need to go have breakfast at this diner. So I was like, okay, well, I'm going to go for breakfast. So I did that. And I had this really interesting insight that day. And I actually had talked about it either on my YouTube channel, maybe here on my podcast. I don't remember. Um, that was pretty significant. So I took the inspired action, right? I still had a list of goals that I need to get of steps, action steps for the things I needed to get done that day. But then I felt inspired to go do something that I hadn't planned on doing. And then I received some pretty significant insight by doing that. So do you see what I'm saying? You can have goals and intentions, break them down into tasks, but still be in tune with your intuition. And don't be afraid to take those action steps as they come about. All right. Now, your intuition. Let's talk about that for a sec because it it acts as a guide, okay? Your intuition is really your higher self, okay? Inspired action often arises from the intuitive whispers. We just talked about that, right? Um, oh, wait, no. I You know what? I accidentally hit the mouse button on my notes and I <laughs> uh, the page scrolled backwards. So uh, I already talked about that, but I mean, it does intuition acts as a guide. It's your higher self. So if you can really tune into that, it's really going to be helpful. Okay. All right. So as you break down your goals, okay, celebrate each milestone as a victory on your path. All right. The signs, uh, the synchronicities will be there if you recognize them. And really, everything, everything that happens is unfolding, is a bridge to your manifestation. So it really comes down to how do you react to it? How do you react to what's happening? Can you be non-reactive when something is not going the way you think it should or as planned or things seem to be chaotic or going the opposite direction. Don't react. Can you, can you be so grounded in the knowing that your manifestations are unfolding and your intentions are coming to fruition that you can be non-reactive. Okay. That is so important. It's so helpful. Okay. Um, and if you can observe and be grateful for everything in your reality and what it is showing you and what you're learning from that, right? If you can be grateful and then celebrate the milestones um, in your life, the things that do show you that you're on the right path, um, if you can celebrate those as a victory, right? You'll gain momentum there, okay? All right, now, We've talked about uh, daily rituals before, okay? So if you can uh, incorporate daily rituals that align your actions with your intentions, whether it's, you know, morning visualization, affirmations, setting intentions for the day, or what have you, these rituals create a foundation for inspired actions to unfold, okay? So, um, and that, coincides right with reflection and, and adjustment because reflection and adjustment um, or revision can be part of your daily ritual okay your daily alignment ritual so regularly reflect on your actions and their alignment with your desires adjust your course as needed recognizing that you know flexibility is is a key element in conscious co-creation and so adaptation, being able to adapt, ensures that your actions remain in harmony with your evolving intentions, all right? Because remember, at each, each moment, each moment of the day, okay, we are shifting. 
we are shifting our state of consciousness we're shifting uh timelines essentially so what are you doing throughout the day that is are you the person that you want to be every moment throughout the day i know that seems like a monumental task right but those small but those small moments gain momentum okay so think about that right what is your first thought when you wake up in the morning what is your daily routine like okay what is your what are you observing what are you thinking throughout the day there is a synergy between intention and action so for instance harmony in motion right really if you think about it it's harmony in motion okay so if you're somebody who can see energy um you'll under you'll kind of understand the visual of, of, of what i'm <laughs> referring to um but again there's a synergy right between your intention and action that um that does look like harmony and motion i wish i could explain it. i've seen it like energy how it dances together um when the when things are really uh in alignment all right um so anyway i sorry i was getting the visual coming through again and sometimes when that happens when i'm talking and then i can actually see it it kind of <laughs> um it wants to kind of throw me down like i could talk about that for days um the that beauty of seeing um seeing energy and how it how it flows and dances together or sometimes um it can even if it's not flowing together it can seem kind of murky um but yeah anyway that would be a whole nother episode talking about energy like that um all right so anyway intention is the seed right think of intention is the seed your desire right is the seed and action is the nurturing soul so everything everything about that manifestation is contained within the seed okay nurturing it through aligned action not force right you're not trying to make it grow everything needed for it to grow like it's going to grow it's a seed right it needs to be nurtured but like you don't have to stand and watch over it yeah tell telling it you know grow grow <laughs> um it's going to grow just nurture it but that nurturing comes through aligned action you can really think of intention as uh blueprints okay um the blueprint right for this masterpiece that is your desire it provides the vision and the structure for your desires okay and um this clarity that comes from from setting these intentions or whatever intentions you you may be setting um again becomes this guiding force that directs intentional actions you set your intentions and your higher self is going to the universe people say the universe um is it's really your higher self because essentially you are the universe the universe is within you okay um will s direct your intentional actions through your intentions right um then your higher self the universe is going to know okay these are the actions that need to be taken for this desire because they're already within the seed of that desire okay all right so now let's talk about action being as a brush stroke brush stroke because we're going to go back to the analogy of being the artist again here for a sec so um your intention sets the scene and action becomes the brush stroke that colors your canvas 
So each intentional action is an artistic expression, really, okay, that contributes to the vibrant tapestry of your manifested reality. And it really is vibrant. Like, look at your reality and all that you've created, whether consciously or unconsciously, right? It's definitely not one note, all right? Uh, if you look at it, you know, as a whole from the from the larger picture. So, again, so these brush strokes, if you will, when aligned, create this beautiful, harmonious masterpiece. All right, so there are some techniques to align your actions with intentional energy. Uh, we've talked about these before. So there's mindful decision making. So before taking action, practice mindful decision making. Pause and reflect on whether the proposed action aligns with the energy of your intentions. Okay. Conscious decision making ensures that your actions resonate with the frequency of your desires. So this actually, there are a couple things. Um, there's an, another section where we talk about obstacles that I, I'm going to bring this up again, but um, right before, so right before taking any of, uh, or doing any of the coaching that I've done with others, like my, um, me, myself having a coach, not me coaching, but myself hiring a coach or even, um, this, this course I'm doing now, launch your dragon. I don't just jump into things anymore. Okay. Being a manifesting generator, be, that being, uh, uh, part of my human design, I tend to emotionally like, Oh, that looks great. I want to do that. And then kind of there's part of me that kind of wants to wants to just jump and and go ahead and do it, but I have I've learned to kind of pract like practice the pause <laughs> and reflect. Is this really something in alignment? It may look great. It may seem fun, right? I may be able to learn something from this, but does that does it align with the energy of the true intentions, right? of what I really want to do, my business and my life, et cetera. Um, so I've, that I've had to be very consciously aware uh, to pause and reflect. Okay. So, um, yeah, so that's very important. If you tend to jump <laughs> to, to do things and then afterwards you're like, Oh, why did I do that? Pause and reflect mindful decision-making. Okay. Uh, you can also visualize before acting. So visualization is not only a tool for setting intention, attentions, but also for aligning actions. So before taking intentional steps, visualize the successful outcome of your actions. Um, this mental rehearsal really strengthens the energetic connection between your intentions and actions. So I do this quite often too. Something will come up and uh, I, there have been times where I've stopped and I'm like, no, this, this is not going ideally, perhaps I know what my intentions are for this. I know that I con I consciously create my reality. So ne let me not react to this, you know, whatever may be going on. I'm going to visualize the outcome that I desire. So I've done that before. I've stopped and visualized the outcome rather than reacting to what may be coming up as part of whatever bridge of events for whatever manifestation, etc. Okay. That is unfolding. That may not necessarily look like it is unfolding, but it is because everything is essentially a manifestation. So there's every moment of every day is really an unfolding, you know, a bridge towards something. All right. And then, uh, you can also create an action plan so you can develop a strategic action plan that aligns with your intentions. 
for instance, a daily routine, a spiritual uh, routine, okay? Um, that would be an example of creating an action plan, okay? What do, how do I want to be? What do I want to be like in my daily life that aligns with my desires, that aligns with what I am creating? For instance, if you are manifesting a new home, a beautiful new home, okay? When you walk throughout your house during the day, do you think, do your, what are you thinking about where you're currently living? When you fall asleep at night, when you lay your head down in bed, are you laying your head down in your current home or are you laying your down, head down on the pillow in your new home? Okay. Things like that. Develop a strategic action plan that aligns with your intentions. So for instance, you are manifesting a new beautiful home. So I'm telling so since I'm telling you this now, what it's like two in the afternoon. Um, so tomorrow or tonight, rather, when you lay your head down on your pillow, lay your head down in your new home, on your new bed in your new home. Okay. When you wake up in the morning, okay. Are you going to just walk into your kitchen in your new home? Or are you going to think to yourself, um, where, you know, where would the layout of your kitchen be? Okay. Essentially, that can be a strategic action plan, right? That aligns with your intentions. Your strategic action plan is... You are now living in your new home. So as you walk throughout your current home, you're really in your mind's eye walking throughout your new home. Okay. As you, if you have, maybe you have a planner. Okay. So as you write down the things that you, that you need to get done today, is there one thing that you can write down on your planner that aligns with your long-term goals, your long-term desire, okay? It can be, and here's the thing, you can be bold and, um, and use your imagination a bit, right? So, for instance, say you are... Say you're writing a book. Your goal is to be a published author, okay? You may not have even started your book right now, okay? But perhaps in your planner, you can write down that, you know, I have a meeting with my publisher at, I don't know, 4 p.m. or whatever. You don't actually have to be doing that today, but you can write it down as, um, because you know, you're going to be a published author, right? Right. If you were being a published author, you would have a meeting with your publisher. And the thing is, everything exists right now. So why not write that in your planner? I've done it before. I haven't done it in a while, but I've done something similar before. All right. Um, Okay. Oh, I wanted to mention something. I lost my train of thought. I took a sip of coffee and then I had something come to mind that I wanted to say. So here's the thing. You don't have to tell people you're doing thing. You're meeting with a publisher today, even though you haven't started with your book. You don't have to tell people that. All right. And you may write down that you have a meeting with your publisher and you may think to yourself, this is crazy. It doesn't matter, right? You're not crazy. You are creating your future in this now moment, okay? So write your own story. Write your own story, right? Don't be afraid to do that. 
All right. Um, let's talk about amplifying the manifestation process. First, we do that with consistency. Consistency in intention and action. Aligned action. So the synergy between intention and action is amplified through consistency. So regularly revisit and reaffirm your intentions because you will find yourself kind of things will come up that are not, that don't align with your intentions, right? But they're just showing you that, hey, you can react differently this time, okay? Or um, you, you're not quite there yet. You don't quite ha have the faith yet that it's actually going to happen. So just reaffirm your intentions, okay? And don't be afraid of the things that come up that may seem like they're opposing what you're, you're manifesting. Uh, just allow those things to show you, you know, you just, I, it's time to reaffirm. Okay. Or I'm subtly focused on it not happening. So let me just focus on the fact that it is happening. Okay. All right. So again, regularly revisit, reaffirm your intentions and ensure that your actions align with the energy of these uh, intentions. Okay. Consistent, consistent, consistency. <laughs> becomes a catalyst, you know, for this, for manifestation. Um, and again, celebrate the intentional milestone. So acknowledge and celebrate each intentional milestone because these aren't just checkpoints, but rather affirmations that your actions are in harmony with your intentions. Okay. So celebration becomes a form of gratitude and it reinforces the positive energy surrounding your desires. Okay. I do this even with things that aren't necessary, that things that are opposite or seem, are, seem to be opposite of what I would like to see happen because I know that, that in and of itself is just showing me something. So I'm grateful for the journey. I'm grateful for the good and the bad, right? The positive and the negative because everything is showing me something, right? I don't say I'm, you know, I'm so grateful that, that this happened this way. If it's something negative, I'm like, I'm so grateful that this is showing me this. And then I reaffirm something or I know that I need to kind of go into visualization, right? It's a journey. <laughs> it is a journey. All right. Um, and it's a dynamic process. Manifestation is a dynamic process. So the ability to adapt and to observe um, is crucial. Stay flexible in your approach, okay? Um, recognize that intentional actions may require an adjustment, okay? Tune into your intuition, okay? Um, this adaptation really ensures that you remain in alignment with the evolving energy of your intentions. Now let's talk about overcoming resistance to action. Okay. Resistance is like this unseen force. Okay. It can create hurdles on the path to manifesting your desires. Um, so let's talk about recognizing resistance, some strategies to overcome it, etc. All right. So um, recognizing resistance can be done, can be done, um, through our internal dialogue awareness. It often manifest re resistance often manifests through negative self talk or doubts. So pay attention to your internal dialogue. If you catch yourself hesitating, doubting, or fearing the outcome of your actions, it might be a significance of or it might be a sign of resistance. Okay. Um, and then procrastination patterns. All right. So <clears throat> delaying or avoiding task can be a subtle form of resistance. 
If you find yourself consistently putting off actions that align with your intentions, it's essential to recognize this pattern and address the underlying resistance. Okay, I've run into this before. If you're procrastinating on something, what is creating that procrastination? Okay, what is creating that pattern within you? I have run into that with, I'm going to be completely honest with you. I have been <coughs> running into that issue in regards to, in regards to writing. Okay. I've got three books in the works and I had been procrastinating on them and I actually something just came up this past week meditation that really kind of um, knocked me upside the head if you will that I, I need to get these done okay I need to get these done and um, I need to not worry about I need to not worry about anything surrounding getting these, um, you know, getting them, them done. Um, I don't want to go into too much detail, um, because our words are, our words have power, right? Um, but well, I'll just say it. So my first book, right. Growing up all of the trauma, things like that. I didn't want to revisit that. Okay. Um, my, the, anything having to do with scripture, um, is pretty significant because there are so many, there are so many beliefs surrounding scripture, but I see it from an awakened mystical point of view now. And I've re and I, I get information, I receive information through meditation, uh, et cetera. And I received something in meditation just this past Sunday, which was so significant. I was like, okay, wow. But who am I, who am I, right? Who am I to do this? And I received an answer to that. So there are certain things that I've been putting off that I, that, that, um, I have no doubt that I need to do now. And I need to push through, not worry about what anybody else thinks. No, from my own experience, information I've received from my higher self, my guides, universe, etc., whatever, these things, I need to finish these things. Okay. Because they're important. And there is a significance and a purpose behind it for my journey and not only my journey, but for the individuals that, um, that my experiences, my words, my sharing are meant to touch are meant to help as part of their journey. Right? So procrastination, if you recognize, uh, procrastination, what is the underlying resistance? Okay. For me, one of the things was, well, who am I? Right. Who am I? Um, I know who I am. I know who I am, but ego comes in and says, who am I? Right. So then, you know, you have to kind of step into your power and the power, the knowing of who you are as this re as this beautiful divine being here for a purpose. You chose this life. Okay. You have a purpose here. It's not insignificant. So step into that. Okay. All right. There are also physical and emotional signals. Okay. Resistance can manifest physically and emotionally. So notice these feelings of, of tension, anxiety, or discomfort when contemplating certain actions or even inaction. These signals can provide valuable insights into areas where resistance may be present. So when I had that significant message come through in meditation this past Sunday, I physically felt sick. 
like I physically felt nauseous and the nauseous came from me knowing that I have been resistant to to um, to writing these books and sharing certain information okay um, yeah so I felt nauseous not just during the meditation after it and for maybe even the next day definitely for that day I was just like wow I have not been fully stepping into this because again the question was arising well who am I well guess what <laughs> that you I've just got to do it so anyway you may feel so you may have things like that come up so or like if you're if you have this desire that you're manifesting and that question comes up for you right well can I really have this or who am I to get on stage and speak or you know who am I to um, you know to share this information with certain people or who am I to think I can take this trip right you are creating your reality so know that though that resistance that question questioning is coming up and it's giving you a, a chance to fully step into who you are and the power that you have creating your reality all right all right so let's now talk about strategies to overcome resistance all right again mindfulness cultivate mindfulness because it's a powerful powerful tool to recognize resistance you can practice being present in the moment, observing your thoughts and emotions as they arise without judgment. Then mindfulness cultivates um, awareness, right? Um, and it allows you to identify and address resistance as it arises. It takes practice. Trust me, it takes practice. But after a while, it'll become, it really will become like second nature. You'll just automatically, if something comes up, you'll, you'll automatically be able to for the most part right um obviously we have so many thoughts throughout the day you know there are things that may slip through the the cracks but it gets easier and easier with practice that things will come up and and right away you'll be like nope right that's what why is this coming up let me you know let me tweak this a little bit let me fix this because this is not really where i want to be this is not the thought i want to be thinking right now all right um and then reframe your negative beliefs so challenge and re reframe any negative beliefs that come up right that fuel this resistance and replace the self-limiting thoughts with empowering affirmations shift your mindset because it creates a more conducive environment for the dance of action okay um and then break tasks into smaller steps if you need to resistance can be overwhelming sometimes right when you have faced with you know large tasks that you need to do so break them into smaller more manageable steps okay focus on achievable actions achievable actions right um because you not only make progress but you also reduce the perceived resistance so when what came through a meditation came through this past sunday in regard to um, what I'm supposed to to write it was like it was really profound so think I want to say this without sounding egoic because this really has nothing to do with the with the ego where the ego comes in is where I was like <laughs> well who am I but this what came through was so profound in this writing it was kind of like if you think like Einstein or Tesla level kind of information, writing and reworking information that we've been so used to, that's kind of what it was, right? And I thought, at first I thought, oh my goodness, am I, am I supposed to do this like right now? And I kind of had to settle into what I was feeling, into the moment. And I say into the moment, but it was like really that day because it was so profound, like it was, and it made me so nauseous and I had to sit with it and I was like, okay, no, like this could really be 
this is not something I have to do like right away. First of all, it would be impossible to get it all done right away, but it was like, no, this could really be like over the next several years or whatever, this unfolding. But the information came, that came through was like, um, this is what you, this is what, um, part of what you came here to do, um, in this lifetime. And now you're being made aware of it. Now that you've awakened, you're on this ascension path, you're being made aware of it now because you're ready for this information. Okay. But but at, it seemed overwhelming, right? Because I was like, how am I going to do this like right now? And then again, as I settled into it, it was like, no, this is in this lifetime. Okay. So now you're aware. You can, this can now be broken down the, into these smaller steps. Okay. Um, the, that didn't come through the part about breaking it down into smaller steps, but, um, realizing that in this lifetime. Okay. So it doesn't, it doesn't necessarily mean I have to sit and like write for 40 hours a day for the next, like, you know, 10, 12 weeks to get this all done. No, break it down into smaller, more manageable steps. And that's what I'm going to do. All right. So if you have things like that, that come up, that seem overwhelming, sit with it because the information will come through on, does this really have to be done right now? If not, break it down into smaller steps. Okay. Um, and then again, in regards to action. So action, again, it's like this dance. It's not this forceful push. So embrace a more fluid approach recognize that action is a dance with the universe. Okay. It's all energetic. It's not about forceful pushing, but about moving with the rhythm of co-creation. You are co-creating. So embrace a fluid and adaptable approach to action because that allows it to unfold organically. You don't have to force anything. Okay. Um, and align with your authentic self. Ensure that the actions that you take align with your authentic self and your core values. So when your actions resonate with your true essence, resistance diminishes, okay? And the dance becomes a harmonious expression of your desires, all right? I'm going to bring up another example. This Launcher Dragon course that I took, I'm still taking. Um, I was excited about it. I practiced the pause. I took a moment. I was like, do I really want to do this? I was like, yes, because I saw the synchronicities. I saw the signposts. So I paid the first half of the course, right? And that was no small, um, let's put it this way. I could have put the money elsewhere, but I paid for half of the course up front. And immediately my ego was like, why did you do that? Right? You, this money could go elsewhere. Uh, are you sure this is really the right decision kind of thing? Even though I knew it was the ego automatically, right? There was resistance. Okay. And I was like, no, I saw this. I saw the synchronicity. This is something I know I'm supposed to be doing. Had I not taken, had I, had I let that resistance kind of take over my ego, like talk me out of it, I would not have received this profound message that I received on Sunday in meditation, or maybe it would have taken months or years to receive it. Okay. So when resistance comes up, recognize it. Okay. Um, yeah. Wow. I'm thinking about that, that whole turn of events, my goodness. Um, all right. So align with your authentic self. Okay. When your actions resonate with your true essence, resistance diminishes. Okay. Trust me. I've been there. 
and again celebrate your small victories okay and then and learn to flow with the rhythm of co-creation trust the process okay trust the process connect with your vision and practice self-compassion be gentle with yourself as you navigate resistance practice self-compassion and acknowledge that resistance is a natural part of the journey treat yourself with kindness okay let go of any self-judgment that may arise all right so we're going to go over an hour today but hopefully this information is really helpful i mean i know it's helpful um but you know depending on kind of where you are in your journey whether it really resonates right now or not um i'm hoping that it will so we but anyway i'm gonna finish uh, i'm gonna uh kind of finish going through my notes we'll just go over in an hour all right so um surrendering to the flow right that's really um important it's really important to understand the concept so letting go of control means sur surrendering and it involves letting go of the need to control every aspect of the manifestation process so it's a recognition that the universe right your higher self with its vast wisdom is a co-creator in your journey so surrendering is an act of trust in this cosmic dance if you will okay embrace divine timing and remember you are the divine okay you are the divine so surrendering to the flow acknowledges the presence of divine timing you're co-creating everything you're create you're creating everything you're co-creating your mind with your higher self your subconscious mind is co-creating everything okay um it and then everyone is an aspect of you everything that you see everything you experience everyone you encounter aspect of you although they exist in their own right they are in your reality um as a co-creative effort so that you can experience what you came here to experience learn what you came here to learn etc okay so you are creating and you are co-creating right um again your mind and your higher mind are co-creating everything okay so there is divine timing in that because your higher mind knows when everything is going to happen to come to fruition okay um it's a matter of letting go and allowing it to happen okay um certain certain elements of your manifestation journey are going to unfold exactly when they're meant to unfold okay so patience really becomes a virtue okay all right um surrendering also allows you to align with the universal intelligence your higher self that orchestrates the, this intricate dance of energies right so it's an acknowledgement that um the universe uh holds a perspective beyond your immediate understanding right so by surrendering you open yourself to its guidance i want to say whenever i say universe i am referring to your higher self right your soul okay because the universe is within you there's no separation so universe higher self right you could say god all one all one all you okay they're all synonymous with with being one <laughs> all right let's talk about some practical insights on balancing intent intentional action uh, and trust we've talked about this before set clear intentions mindful action listen to intuitive guidance and cultivate trust okay as, as far as navigating challenges right embrace the challenges as lessons okay maintain a positive mindset and celebrate each step okay challenges are part of the dance they are intricate steps right that contribute to the beauty of the whole okay so embrace 
challenges as lessons and recognize that they carry valuable insight and growth opportunities, okay? And then of course, have a positive mindset, right? It's a powerful ally in, in the stance of co-creation, okay? And then again, celebrate each step. Each step celebrate because every, every step has significance um, and if you celebrate rather than kind of bash it, you know, the things that aren't necessarily going your way, just recognize it's a lesson. Thank you for showing me this lesson. I, you know, I, I recognize it and then just move on. Okay. We've got a couple more sections to go and then we will be done. So let's talk about, um, trusting the unseen path. Okay. So understanding, so if you can understand, right, trust as being this guiding light, right, you'll realize that um, you can have faith in the unseen. Trust involves having faith in the unseen. It's an acknowledgement that beyond this visible horizon, there exists this tapestry of possibilities waiting to unfold. Everything exists, right? So trust is really powerful because it becomes, the, you know, like this lantern, if you will, that lights our way through the shadows of uncertainty. Okay. Um, and then embracing uncertainty. Co-creation is a dance, right? With uncertainty, really. Okay. Set your intention. How is it going to come about? No idea. Okay. Trust is the embrace that allows us to move gracefully through the unknown right? Recognizing that uncertainty is not a hindrance, but rather it's an integral part of the transformative journey. Okay. And then there's connection with uh, universal intelligence. So trust is a bridge that connects us with the universal intelligence at play. Okay. Uh, it's a recognition that there is really this grander plan and by trusting in the process, right? We align ourselves with the cosmic forces that conspire to bring us our desires to lie. And again, all synonymous, all one, all you, all within you. Okay. All right. So let's talk about cultivating trust in this co-creation process. Okay. Again, set clear intentions. Trust really begins with setting clear intentions. You know what you have set your intentions, right? You know what you desire. You know that you visualized, etc. Trust in that. Trust that it is done. Okay. Um, and then engage in intentional action mindfully. Okay. And acknowledge and celebrate progress. Right. Trust is nurtured through this gratitude, this acknowledgement, this celebration. Okay. Of these milestones. So if you see a sign or synchronicity, celebrate that. Okay. Um, and remember that the universe, right. Um, is a co-creator in your manifestation. Co universe, higher mind, right? Higher self, God. All right. Um, so trust in the co-creation process. There's nothing outside of you, okay? So trusting in this process involves acknowledging the universe as a co-conspirator. You're really co-conspiring with yourself, um, with your higher self with God in your manifestation journey. Understand that these forces are working in tandem, forces being energy, working in tandem with your intentions, supporting your endeavors, okay? Um, and then the universe communicates through synchronicities and signs. So pay attention to the subtle messages. They're all around you, okay? All right. And then don't doubt the signs. They come up, recognize them, celebrate them. Don't doubt them, right? Um, just trust in the validity of the signs it, because it deepens your connection with the co-creative flow, okay? And maintain a positive outlook, okay? Positivity is so important, okay? Um, and then, and, and just trust in this transformed force, <clears throat> right? of co-creation. Release the need for immediate answers. Okay. Trust involves releasing the need for immediate answers. Okay. It's an acceptance. The certain aspects of this co-creation process 
unfold and divine timing, release and patience, okay, because it opens up the space for trust to flourish, all right? Challenges are inevitable in the stance of co-creation. Trust in the resilience that allows you to face challenges with grace and determination, okay? Each challenge becomes an opportunity for growth and a testament to the trust you place in the process. You will find You'll be able to gauge your growth, right, over time um, as things come up and you no longer allow them to affect you. And you're like, no, I just trust. I know what I've created. I know what I've visualized. I know what's happening. And you just trust, right? Um, again, it gets easier. Eventually, it becomes your natural state of consciousness, <clears throat> the state of trust and knowing. And then when some, when things do come up, like the little things that are like, huh, that kind of contradict something, maybe if it does come up, you like, you recognize it right away. And you're like, well, that's not right. <laughs> and you can automatically, like, you'll be able to gauge your, 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 your growth, right. And your, your, like your evolving state of consciousness, you're no longer in that that state of worry, fear, or doubt, even if something comes up, you know, that, that may contradict like what you're manifesting or something shows up in your reality. You're like, why is that happening to me? Right. You'll automatically recognize and go that actually that's showing me that it's not affecting me anymore. Right. Okay. Great. Celebrate that. Okay. Savor the journey, right? Trust transforms the co-creation journey from a destination-focused endeavor to a soulful exploration. It really is beautiful, okay? Savor each moment and recognize that the journey itself uh, holds profound lessons, growth, and the fulfillment of your desires. All right, now finally, let's talk about celebrating small wins, okay, and course correction. <clears throat> All right. There is construction work going on outside. I, I can hear it. I don't know if you guys will be able to hear it. It's kind of faint, but if you hear some weird noises, that's what it is. I'm going to take another sip of my coffee real quick. All right. Every step counts. The power of small wins, okay, and manifestation counts. Okay, small wins act as building blocks that construct the momentum necessary for the manifestation process. Okay, so celebrate these victories, all right, because it, and allow it to create this positive energy that propels you forward, right, inch by inch towards your desired reality. Okay, for instance, you are, say you are, say you're manifesting love into your life. Okay. Uh, or like a specific person, like you have your mindset on, you have a crush on somebody, right? You're manifesting that like a date with that person. If, um, if you notice small, like small little victories, right? Like maybe they, maybe you've been at work for like a year. Um, now, now you understand manifestation. So you've been, so for the past, like four months of that year, you've been manifesting them. Well, they haven't talked to you for like a year. And then all of a sudden they smile, they walk past you and they smile and they say hi, right? Maybe they didn't ask you out, but they smile, walk past you and say, smile and say hi, celebrate that. Okay. Celebrate that. Um, maybe you're manifesting love into your life and all of a sudden, like you have five exes like text you or call you up. Maybe you don't want to go out with them, but celebrate the small wins. Okay. Because those are signs in synchronicity. Maybe you're manifesting a new job. Okay. And all of a sudden things at your current work start going wrong. Okay, don't look at it negatively. 
understand that the that these things that are going wrong are probably going wrong because you're now focused on a new job you're manifesting a new job okay so celebrate the small wins okay all right uh and then you know each so each small win okay is an affirmation right of progress think about it that way all right so it's a testament that your intentional actions are making a difference so acknowledging these affirmations like can boost your confidence and strengthen the belief in the manifestation process okay uh cultivate a positive mindset right positive mindset positive mindset positive mindset don't react negatively to anything become neutral okay um now let's talk about some uh, course corrections. All right. Embracing growth opportunities. Remember, flexibility on the journey is important. So uh, because the manifestation journey, right, is dynamic, right? Life is dynamic. The entire journey, this entire journey of awakening, um, this whole path we're on is dynamic, right? So course corrections are natural, okay? So be open to adjustments in your path right that demonstrates flexibility and a willingness to adapt embrace the changes you know they can often lead to more aligned and efficient uh, routes towards your desires right you may have a specific plan for your life okay uh, or specific ways to do things but you may need to course correct right so allow for that don't be so strict okay uh, and then learn from challenges, right? So course corrections often arise from challenges encountered on the journey, reacting to things rather than recognizing something negative that may come up um, as, wow, that no longer affects me, right? If you react to it, it's still affecting you. Course correct by not reacting. If consistent patterns continue to come up, course correct by not reacting. You will break the pattern, okay? Um, and then refine your intention. So course corrections allow you to refine your intentions if you need to. As you progress on your journey, your understanding evolves, and so do your desires. And then tend to become uh, clearer and clearer about your desires, okay? So being open to adjustments enables you to align your intentions more closely with your evolving authentic self. Okay. So recognize that the journey is a destination um, or the journey is the destination, right? The journey itself, everything you experience on the journey, the journey is the destination. Um, to recognize the importance of each moment, right? Embrace the present. Cultivate mindset and find joy in the process. Okay. Um, you can do things like for celebrating those uh, milestones, um, recognizing the milestones. You can keep a journal. Okay. Um, set milestones again. Um, if you set milestones along your journey, right, as you reach certain milestones, celebrate those and then regularly uh regularly assess your path okay because again eventually you'll realize wow this no longer affects me this no longer bothers me i really have grown i really have changed or <clears throat> i no longer doubt this i know this manifestation is unfolding right even if i can't see it right now it's unfolding i trust that right so it doesn't worry me anymore. I don't have doubts, etc. Right. And then if you create, a, if you keep a journal, you'll be able to look back over time and see like how much growth there has been, how many things that you have manifested. Okay. All right. So that is it for today's episode. I know we ran way long, what hour and 20 minutes. So <clears throat> thank you for joining me. Um, for today's episode i lost my train of thought <laughs> all right so that is it um just you know in the upcoming episodes um 
we've got four more in this series on manifestation mastery. We'll continue to unravel, you know, each of these steps in this process. Um, but for now, um, I'm signing off. So may your actions be intentional, inspired, and in perfect alignment with the reality that your heart seeks to manifest. I will see you guys all in the next episode. All right, bye now.